so our agenda today will have, uh, well, I hope I have the agenda. <laughs> the agenda today will have some opening remarks from our executive director and from uh, the head of the WASH uh, unit at WHO. Then we will have Batsi uh, from uh, officer at WHO who will be uh, presenting the call to action and uh, the process that will be will lead to the final document. And after that, we will have um, some representatives of uh, the institutions that form this coalition uh, that will, is aimed at, at developing and launching this call to action. Uh, and finally, we will have also some closing remarks from uh, the regulator from Palestine and uh, discuss some next steps. And I hope, I hope that we all will be involved in. Uh, so I think the previous slide had the objectives of the session, uh, Isabel. Um, okay, so uh, the objectives of the, se of the session in particular, we want to sensitize uh, the participants to this call to action. I know some of you might think, okay, another document, another initiative. Uh, and so the idea is to uh, sensitize you and get you on board. Uh, we are also initiating uh, the process. It's going to be a collaborative process to be developed in the next few months. And so we're going to launch this pro process and uh, provide you with the roadmap uh, for the development of the actual document to be launched. Then to kick off our session, I would like to invite uh, the Executive Director, Dr. Calabara Mufi, to give some opening remarks on behalf of our association. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's really a very pleasure to be here. It's a very important activity for us today, this, this call for action. Um, and, you know, it really does support all the work that we've been doing um, through our International Regulators Programme for Water and Sanitation and the collaborative work that we've been doing with WHO. Um, regulation for a long time has really been in the shadows um, to do in respect to water and sanitation. This was really due to the nature of regulation. You know, very often regulators viewed as policemen who are really trying to, you know, detect non-compliance with legal standards and detect sort of poor practices, etc. But that sort of role of regulators has changed quite a bit. And now we're seeing regulators actually as being the potential instigators of change that can actually push utilities and, and other water supply water operators to implement um, innovation and, and promote change that, that we very much need in our sector. And at the global level, we've had two agencies that have been focusing quite a bit on this. Um, you have the WHO, uh, which hosts the Regulator Network for Drinking Water Supply and Sanitation, RegNet, and, since, and that's been going on since 2008. And then at IWA, um, we have our International Water and Sanitation Regulators Forum, which has been around since 2012. And these two activities um, are really complementary. RegNet focuses on the regulation of service quality with a special focus on public health, while the Regulators Forum really focuses on something slightly different, on the economics, on the environmental, and also on the health. And both platforms really provide you know an opportunity for international exchange um, on the challenges on the constraints that we're facing and, and what works in regulation what doesn't work in regulation at the regional level also there's been a lot of developments in latin america and in europe there's lots of regional associations of regulators who have been active for a very long time addressa and, and endware for example and and more recently sos and I think we have, um, yeah, you've gone there, yeah. And um, what SOS has really united the regulators from both East and, and Southern Africa. And right now you're seeing regional associations in the Middle East, in South Asia, and also in Southeast Asia. Regional development banks have played quite a critical role in helping establish these regulatory associations. So they're becoming a very important activity. Some national regulator bodies, such as the Portuguese, um, their Liswater, as affiliated with regulators such as ARSA, um, and reach sort of international level through, you know, Liswater, uh, submitting quite a lot of submissions to the UN 2023 um, conference in New York. 
So now it's time to give uh, drinking water and san sanitation regulation a further boost. Uh, water and sanitation authorities are now facing lots of new challenges and an increased demand for services from a chronic <laughs> population. And of course, they're dealing with a lot more emerging pollutants and contaminants, such as PFAC. And you know what we heard from Amy yesterday, uh, antimicrobial resistance. And of course, we have all the challenges associated with global change questions such as climate change and how we deal with, with that in order to create sort of more resilient systems. And this creates a need for greater capacity among the regulatory bodies. They need the human resource base, allowing them to take on these new tasks. They need new mechanisms to ensure a reliable evidence base for their decision making, very much data driven. And they need um, strengthening of their own institutional arrangements. But most of all, they need a healthy financial resource base to carry out their operations. So for this reason, a couple of interested parties have taken the initiative to develop a call for action to strengthen WASH regulation. A number of these organizations have contributed to the effort, and today I'm happy to open this formal launch of the initiative that should lead to the call for action, and that will support the interest of all these parties and stakeholders. It's recognized that for the development of the call for action, the process of engaging all relevant partners is as important as the final product. So the process is very important, how we get to this call for action. And the purpose of this gathering today with all of you here is to elicit expressions of interest to really find out, you know, among you, because you are the key stakeholders, who would like to engage in this process and who would like to participate in the development of this call for action. So it's really a canvassing exercise with all of you today. The fact that you are here is already a commitment, um, an expression of interest. And so we are really looking forward to hearing from all of you in the next 45 minutes. We will also hear how this initiative will be taken forward and what will be the key milestones um, in that process um, to develop this call for action. So with that, I wish you all well. Um, I think it's going to be a great 45 minutes and I think you all have a lot to contribute. And um, yeah, I look forward to hearing what comes out of this very important meeting. Thank you all very much. So thank you, Carla, for providing as uh, by the way's perspective on the importance of this initiative. And I would like to apologize for this very professional yeah, yeah. arrangement here. But as we know, the, the Congress is not hybrid, so it was a last minute arrangement. So we could get some remote speakers participating because they represent some very important uh, institu partner institutions. So apologize for that. Um, um, well, now. Uh, we will have some opening remarks also from the World Health Organization uh, to be delivered by Bruce Gordon, Bruce Gordon, the head of WHO's Unit of Water Sanitation, Hygiene and Health. Uh, Bruce will join us remotely. So, Bruce, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks so much, Daniela. It is a real pleasure to be with you. I wish I could be with you in Toronto. Um, I can see and hear and see some of the Excitement, but let me just say I'm really grateful um, to uh, for this 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 platform that IWA is providing uh, for the whole issue of regulation of water and sanitation service provision. Um, and if you, I think if we could start uh, the slideshow, um, there there was a slide on the the rationale for why we would like to you know kind of launch this initiative today. And of course, from a WHO perspective, there is a public health imperative. Um, poor wash service provision goes without saying. There's a persistently high burden of disease. There's a resurgence of cholera that countries that haven't been impacted by cholera over decades have been. Um, there is regular uh, exceedances of water quality throughout the world. Um, and as Kala said, there's there's a real complexity to um, dealing with some of these emerging contaminants. So there, there is a lot on the table, I think, from a regulatory perspective as far as new challenges and from a supplier uh, perspective. And that's um, obviously going to be uh, exacerbated um, by climate change and deteriorating infrastructure. 
But I think the real reason, um, you know, because one could, I think, make the argument that strength and regulation is something and it should have been something that has should be pursued and could have been pursued over decades in the past. But there is this coalition of the willing um, that Kala mentioned and so many uh, people in the room, you know, are committed to strengthening regulation for very good reasons, reasons which I've just said and more. Um, because ultimately the resource constraints that we're seeing in terms of finances um, and all these challenges are making it very difficult uh, for any one entity alone um, when we need a systems approach, as, as we all know. So providing that supportive entity to provide oversight um, and to help essentially prioritize all this multitude of, of risk and concern is, is of paramount importance. And uh, you mentioned, Kala, some of these regional water and sanitation regulatory associations. There's um, proven models now, I think, for all the entities here that this is actually working. If we look at the UN Water, a global analysis and assessment of sanitation and, and drinking water, they tried to find relationships between uh, improved uh, wash outcomes and, um, and various inputs and regulation was one of the few uh, issues where there was a strong correlation. So we know it's important. We know that the enabling environment is, is something that uh, is, is suffering in the sense that um, when we talk to regulators themselves through our RegNet initiative, we understand, you know, obviously there's there's a resource issue, but um, they're they're operating sometimes without the independence um, and autonomy that that allows them to do their job effectively. But most importantly, there's whole areas uh, that are not um, benefiting from the oversight of of good regulatory, um, you know, uh, I guess services, including small um, and rural communities uh, on drinking water and non sewer sanitation. So um, there are simple measures in place uh, that regulators are uh, coalescing around, including um, risk management planning or water safety and sanitation safety planning um, and use of sanitary inspections that are appropriate uh, models to able to prioritize amongst all these um, various risks in a simple way that makes sense for public health. So it's just to say that I think we're really proud as WHO to be part of a broad alliance and partnership we're proud um, that we're able to do this together. We're, we really want to ensure that we're, all this uh, external support is um, coordinated in a way um, that's rational um, and that that um, you know that allows for the um, comparative advantages of each agency to kind of come in, but most importantly uh, to respond to country requests. So I think Daniela, I, I'll pass it over back to you. Um, but very excited. Um, to be part of this, uh, I think, a really a landmark initiative that we will see um, over time continue to or will have impact. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bruce, for joining us. I know you are on leave, right? I'm on leave, so he's joining us from somewhere in the world and for setting the context for the rest of our session. So now I would like to call uh, Dr. Batsy Majuru, who's here today with us, a uh, technical officer of uh, at WHO's Unit of Water Sanitation, Hygiene and Health. Uh, she's going to present further details uh, regarding the development of this contraction on water sanitation regulation. Uh, over to you, Madison. And thank you most of all to all the people who are joining us here in person and those who are joining online. We really appreciate you coming to hear about this and hopefully adding your voice to what we feel is a important initiative. Is it showing that? Yes. It's so my task today is to really talk in more detail about the call to action. I mentioned rationale for it yesterday in my keynote and really setting out that thinking that there needs to be a better environment for regulators to be working in. Uh, but what, what does that better environment look like? And that's really what we're trying to articulate in this call to action. So in this slide, Bruce has already mentioned some of the challenges that are facing the water sanitation sector right now. And these are challenges that regulators are being called um, to respond to. But they're also being exacerbated by climate change. So how do we deal with weak enabling environments? How do we deal with persistent inequalities? How do we deal with chronic underinvestment when we have so many other shocks that are coming um, from climate change as well? Next slide, please. So what is it that we want to see with this whole direction? Ultimately, we want an environment in which regulators are able to do their job. We want an environment in which um, regulatory institutions are set up in a manner that is fit for purpose, 
they're set up in a manner that it is aligned with the sector policies, the institutional arrangements of the countries that they're working in, and that they're able to achieve their goals. And we want to get addressing those inequalities that we talked about in a way that is catalytic, um, really trying to make sure that regulators are able to do their job in accelerating the improvement of services. But we also want to see further strengthening of these regulators' associations that I talked about yesterday. I talked a bit about some of the catalytic improvements that they're making in this sector. So there are some that are in existence, there are some that are emerging, but the real issue is that in order to be even more effective, to be even better, they do need the support of the governments that they're operating in, but general support partners. So this is eventually we will want to end up with this call to action. Next slide, please. So what are the objectives of this call to action? The first is really around the political space around in which um, regulators are operating. And that is to increase political recognition of the role of, reg of, of regulation. Recognizing that this is all interesting. We talked yesterday about the importance of governance, of policies, institutional arrangements, but a legislative framework that really allows for regulators to thrive. And that happens when there's recognition of the benefit that regulatory institutions are bringing. And there is that positive environment with policy makers. We want to see um, accelerated uptake of good regulatory practices. There is a lot of good work that is being done at a national level, at a regional level. How do we make sure that we are better able to disseminate that across countries, across region, and even more, provide support um, for it to be implemented and accelerated elsewhere? Another objective of this call to action is promoting um, enhancing better coordinated technical assistance. And this speaks more to organizations such as WHO, such as IWA, such as financing institutions that are in a lot of cases involved as instigators of regulatory reform um, through some of the programs that they work with in various countries. So as the external agencies, how do we get our own house in order so that if I'm working with Jimena, or if I'm working with Iran, we're not coming with different requests and basically pulling regulatory institutions in different directions. We all want the same thing, that is better water sanitation services. So how do we do that as external support partners in a way that is coordinated? And the fourth point has to do with strengthening monitoring of the status of regulation. And this is both at a national level, so that there's better understanding nationally where um, regulation is going in line with national targets and policy that have been set, but also thinking about global and regional trends. This is work that is already happening um, on some level because I presented data yesterday, for instance, from the GLASS initiative um, with the, led by WHO on behalf of UN Water. We also know that, for instance, Liz Water has a global um, observatory for regulations that they've set up. How do we make sure that all of those pieces are, fit, are fitting together, that you are able to understand where country X is in terms of water sanitation regulation compared to country Y? or equally region X versus region Y. And where are the gaps? Where do we really need to be putting our resources in accelerating? So a lot of this is really to do with refining and improving what is already there and making sure that we are really putting in the same direction. Next slide, please. So what would be in this call to action? Essentially, it would be an articulation of what makes a regulator effective. What would what makes regulatory institutions function? And this is setting out the conditions that regulatory institutions need in order to thrive. We've already talked about some of them. They need appropriate financing. They need the right political or socio-political environment to be acting. But then there's so many other things that we need to be considering at work as well. But the complementary piece to that is what do effective regulatory bring to the water and sanitation sector? Because to be clear, this is not a call for attention. It is a call with intention. We're really trying to say that we have an intention to improve water sanitation services. This is what we'd like to bring to the sector. But equally, this is what we need to be able to bring those things to the sector. And then this will also include key actions by various stakeholders. So this is not just, hey, governments, this is what we want to see, but really understanding that the water sanitation sector has a lot of players, the utilities, the regulators, they're the regulators themselves. They're the governments in which these institutions are They're support agencies, they're financing institutions. Everybody has a role to play. They're also consumer associations. What role do they play in really strengthening 
So like I said, these are all the entities that are implicated in the call to action. The regulators and the regulated, the environments that they're operating in, i.e. the policymakers, the support agencies, and the financial institutions. So this is just an overview of the people who are making this call at this point, the group of partners. And this is to highlight that this is not a WHO or IWA or SOS call. This is a sector-wide call. And on the slide, I've just put um, the logos of all the entities that are working on this and have been having conversations about this. Um, these are conversations that have been taking place over a period of time, but they really came to a climax at um, uh, uh, the meeting of the Regulators Network, the WHO Coordinates, and the Regulators Forum in Kigali last year, and we've been carrying them forward. Our hope is that there'll be more to join. There's still a lot of voices that we need to be adding to this. Um, some might be represented in this room, um, and some might join later on. Next slide, please. So what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, the first thing that hey, we want to That was last time, long, long time. I told you I think long time. I told you about it. <laughs> <laughs> we just needed an interlude. But, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Um, the first point that we wanted to put out there is that we needed to announce what we're doing. We needed to tell everybody else in the sector what we are thinking. And this is what we've just done now. Now, the next process after this is this consultation period. We really need your input and the input of many others that might not be in this place. Because like Daniela mentioned at the beginning of the session, we do not have a call to action that we're about to just put on the table and say it's done. We are now initiating that process of shaping it, of developing, of re-articulating what those needs are for that regulatory environment and what can be brought into the sector when those needs are met. But also, importantly, what key actions those um, stakeholders will also be uh, um, taking part in. So that includes processes of engagement, mm -hmm. consultation that we'll be conducting over the next couple of months. Yeah, that's, that's that's the audiences at Key Fora. Um, so there are a lot of events that are coming up. We know Stockholm World Water Week is later on this month. Thereafter, SOS has their annual regulators conference. Thereafter, UNC is the Water and Health Conference. Thereafter, the RASA has their own conference, and so on and so forth. These are really key opportunities to be talking more about this, getting more people sensitized, and also an, an, an opportunity for refinement, getting more input from others. We hope to have an articulation of some of these issues um, in, uh, in November, where we'll actually launch that text, if you like, of what that call to action actually is. So that will be at the end of November. But most importantly will be the question of what happens thereafter. Because for us, it's not just we've made noise and then now we walk away. Those key objectives that I mentioned at the beginning, we still need to be working on them. So there are various partners who are able to contribute to this. And then there'll be ongoing efforts to support um, those follow-up activities. Next slide, please. This is something that my colleague just shared with me um, today. Um, an article that just came out today calling for the need for improved regulation in a country that's not too far from here. Some of you might be aware of some of the issues that are happening around wastewater management um, in England. So I thought it would be interesting to just share this is actually highly topical and is in the news as we speak. So if you're interested in transforming the water and sanitation sector, please do get in touch. We are aiming to have an online platform where we'll have all resources available, better opportunities to be connecting on a regular basis. But also you could just have comments, uh, interests that you want to share, criticism even, you're also welcome to that. But I'll stop here for now, thank you. Thank you so much, Patsy, for providing us with the detailed uh, presentation about objectives of this initiative that, as you see, is just being launched. We are not launching the call to action, we are launching the process. Uh, and as Batsy and Bruce uh, previously uh, highlighted, this is not an either way or the WHO project. Uh, the WHO is um, given voice to it, and either way is open uh, our face uh, to, to this. But this is rather a result of discussions that were held over the past year involving many institutions. And I think it's, it's a year, right? Because I think it started in, in Stockholm. 
last year, and then evolved in Kigali at the IWA Water and Development Congress. Uh, and now we have finally matured enough to, to have this launch here in, in Toronto. Uh, so therefore, uh, in the next part of our session, we will hear representatives uh, from some of the institutions involved to share their perspectives on why this is relevant uh, to their context. And uh, well, uh, they will have two to three minutes to, to give their, their remarks. Uh, I kindly ask all uh, of you to respect this time because at 12 at 1.30 we have spectacle sessions starting here. And to begin, I would like to give the floor to Jorge Alvarez Sala, Watch Specialist at UNICEF, uh, who is joining us remotely today. Over to you, George. Thank you very much. I hope you can uh, hear me well. Uh, UNICEF stands in strong support of the global call to action on strengthening water and sanitation regulation. As a leading advocate for the rights and well-being of children worldwide, and also as a key partner in promoting access to water and sanitation for all, UNICEF recognizes the critical importance of effective water and sanitation regulation in ensuring health, safety, and dignity of all individuals, particularly the most vulnerable populations. Effective regulation is a cornerstone of sustainable water and sanitation systems. Evidence from the from the wash uh, from the glass, the global analysis and assessment of sanitation and drinking water a report highlights that countries with robust, robust uh, regulatory frameworks achieve faster progress towards uh, safely managed water and sanitation services. However, this progress is uneven, and in many countries, especially in peri-urban and urban areas, uh, remain unregulated and underserved. And sanitation remains uh, heavily unregulated in many countries. So UNICEF uh, applauds the collaborative e efforts to develop this call to action by bringing attention to the highest political levels. Uh, this initiative aims to strengthen the political commitment, enhance governance, and promote establishment and continued work of effective regulatory systems. These efforts are essential to, ex uh, to achieving and accelerating access to SDG 6. Uh, allow me to, to just uh, mention one of the, the, the four key points on this uh, call to action, which is on strengthening national leadership. Uh, developing roadmaps to advance water and sanitation regulation is vital. UNICEF, WHO, CWI, and IDB jointly developed the WASHREG tool in order to facilitate those processes and accelerate regulatory reforms. The WASHREG tool, which is available in the washreg.org portal, includes the real examples of good practices which can inspire others. UNICEF calls on policymakers, regulators, service providers, and all stakeholders to join forces in this critical endeavor. In conclusion, we reaffirm the commitment to supporting the global call to action on strengthening water and sanitation regulation, and together we can make a significant stride towards achieving the SDG 6 and building a healthier, safer, and more equitable world for all children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jorge, for highlighting UNICEF's vision on the importance of water and sanitation regulation, and in particular, this call to action in achieving SDG 6. So next, we'll hear from Judith Perkins, who's here with us today in Toronto. Uh, program Officer at the Global Water Operators uh, Partnership Alliance, GWAPA, uh, who is here um, to give uh, their perspective on the, the topic. The floor is yours. Hi, colleagues. It's really a pleasure to be here um, to support this really much needed, I think, uh, important initiative that is uh, being put in place today. Um, I'm with GWAPA, which is the Global Water Operators Partnerships Alliance. Um, uh, supported by UN Habitat. We were set up 15 years ago uh, in order to support uh, water and sanitation service providers um, to have a bigger space within the UN system, a greater voice, um, and in particular to support capacity development and sharing between them. I'm, my notes have just disappeared. <laughs> um, but I um, am happy to, um, I, we think as, as operators, we, we it's rare to request uh, support to be regulated, but of course, um, regulation is increasingly seen as something that's really critical um, for advancing um, um, utility um, performance. And I'm sorry, just give me a second so that I can get on track here. 
it's fine. I'll just <laughs> carry on. Um, and and so we recognize increasingly that regulation not only is important for setting ambitious standards and for and, 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 and securing that they're um, uh, and, and enforced, um, but also that um, they're important for um, moving um, the bar, um, in, in enabling innovations, uh, and making significant <laughs> actions that are required um, for um, the kinds of changes that we, we urgently need. Um, as, as a network of operators, we're really happy to support um, this initiative and work in both its design and its implementation. And we look forward to, um, to joining forces with the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for connecting the, the utilities to this topic and uh, highlighting the commitment of the welcome with the idea. So next, I would like to invite uh, Yvonne Magawa, Executive Secretary of the Eastern and Southern Africa Water and Sanitation Regulator Association, ESAWAS, also here with us in Toronto. Thank you very much. Thanks, Yvonne. Thank you, Daniela, and thank you to everyone who has spoken before. Um, as ESAWAS, Eastern and Southern Africa Water and Sanitation Regulators Association, we were initially created uh, for the Eastern and Southern African region um, as an association of water supply and sanitation regulators. But as of October 2023, 44 countries endorsed the expansion of SOS to the continent level. This was in high recognition of the need for effective regulation. So our focus as regulators and regulatory association is to ensure the delivery of quality services without discrimination for all. So the bottom line, as has already been said, is universal access, professionally managed services that are sustainable yet within the reach of the most ordinary of persons. So as SRS, we certainly support the call to action. We are a strong believer in synergies for progress. And knowing that regulators directly impact services, we're talking about access to services, um, the quality of services, the technology of services, the tracking of the services, the, a lot of other aspects that are all within the purview of the regulators. So to access um, service provision really does need effective regulators. And this is what SAWAS itself exists for. So at the, continent level, at the continent level, we are seeing the challenges as well in the disparity among the countries, and we are really keen to address this. So we fully support this call to strengthen water supply and sanitation regulatory systems uh, for the uptake of practices and also being able to um, develop national leadership with regards to regulation. So we want to see strong regulators with strong autonomy for decision making in order to realize the vision of universal access. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for your insights and also for expressing your commitment to the, to the initiative. Uh, the involvement of uh, regional associations of regulations, regulators is key to, for this initiative to succeed. So um, now we will hear a statement from one of our remote participants, also partners in the beginning. Let's welcome uh, Rita Maral, Executive Director of the Lisbon International Center for Water, Liz Water, uh, who I believe is joining us from Lisbon. Uh, Rita, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Daniela, and greetings to all from Portugal. And uh, it's time. More than ever, it's time to rethink the governance framework of our water and sanitation sector. And despite all investments and efforts, we are not on track. This should trigger a fundamental shift. It's time to implement bold structural reforms by governments with well-defined, realistic and measurable targets. It's time to adapt our legal and regulatory frameworks to the existing and upcoming pressing challenges. It's time to improve the architecture of the sector, clarifying responsibilities and fostering collabor collaboration between the actors. It's time to prepare long-term financial forecasts and use innovative financial strategies and instruments. 
it's time to make services more accountable with robust information and monitoring systems that are well communicated to all. It's time to design innovative incentives and sanctioning mechanisms. It's time to create an enabling environment framework for regulators, allowing them to intervene effectively. It's time to modernize and adapt regulators and regulations. It's time to improve their governance with clear and adequate mandates, autonomy and resources. It's time to improve regulatory models, making them more flexible and adapted to the characteristics of the each area, urban, peri-urban, rural, and the nature of providers, private, public, community-based service providers. It's time to enhance regulatory mechanisms and instruments, guiding them to generate impact and results in the sector. Sound regulation and regulators can be a game changer, accelerating the implementation of better policies and better services on the ground for the benefit of societies. It's time to raise the bar and foster a cult of culture of uncompromising standards and transparency in the sector with technically based decisions. The Lisbon International Center for Water, LISWATER, created and focused exactly on those objectives, is thrilled to be part of this coalition of partners driving change in the water and sanitation sector by strengthening regulation. We are very proud of our daily joint work with many dozens of regulators, regulators' networks, governments, utilities, development agencies, many of you globally turning these reforms into effective practical solutions. It's time to act and we are prepared to create effective synergies with partners who share this vision. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rita, not only for uh, expressing the commitment of Fluids Water, an important uh, player in this area, to the initiative, but also to commit to engage the partners in, in this. Uh, so next, we will hear from another regional association of regulators, ADRASA, the Association of Portable Water and Sanitation Regulatory Entities of the Americas represented here by Jimena Quiroz, economics specialist at SUNAS, the Peru, Peru Water and Sanitation Regulator. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm here as a representative of the Association of the Water Regulators in Latin region. So this association brings together 18 countries um, and uh, actually is um, chaired by uh, SUNAS, the Peruvian Regulator. Um, I would like to share some thoughts uh, of this initiative and how we can contribute um, from our position. So the key of this initiative, a call to action, is that it must be uh, a coordinated effort. So it's not just knowing what are the other countries doing. It's The idea is to unite those efforts in a collaborative work. And also, it is important to recognize that the water and sanitation challenges in Latin America are different uh, or are not the same as the challenges that have that we have in Europe or Africa. Um, for this reason, it's good to guarantee the participation of this region in this type of spaces. And I'm talking to the support of uh, with financial resources to can participate. And additionally, uh, just to, to, to comment, Aderasa is currently working with um, this water um, with the implementation of the water gov and this is a part of the global coalition that they are coordinating to but this is a long-term project that can perfectly complement to the call action which has a shorter term um, focus so it is essential to ensure the direct communication between to call the ac action and all the various strategic partners that we have for example in November, we have the uh, Ibero-American Forum in Brasilia, and it's an, an, a forum on regulation. And that same month, we have the G20 in Brazil too. And also we have the RegNet event in Egypt, I, I think. So it would be highly beneficial to coordinate in those events to create a moment um, that we can amplify 
those initiatives, giving them greater visibility and impact. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jimena, for emphasizing the relevance of this uh, initiative for Latin America and uh, presenting the commitment of Adenasa to, to be on board. Um, finally, I would like to give the floor to Neil Dot, the Executive Director of AquaFed, the International Federation of Private Water Operators, who is, will also join us remotely. Uh, Neil, your turn. Hi, Daniela. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for the um, the invite to speak at this event today. And I hope you are all having a good Congress out in Toronto. And I wish I could be there with you. Um, this is a great piece of work for us, and we're very, very excited to do it. So let me so say, first of all, I'm Neil Dot. I'm from Aquafed with the Federation of Private Water Operators. But um, in a way, the private operators um, tag is irrelevant here because our interest is utilities, right? You, having well-functioning utilities, whether they're operated by a public or private uh, operator, that's what we want. And good, appropriate regulation that fits in with the context of the society in which the utilities are in, I think are absolutely essential because then you have, hopefully, the regulation needs to increase performance, uh, increased transparency as well and it where necessary the regulator needs to intervene simple as that to improve the uh performance of of the of the utility in return what you get is increased investor performance sorry increased investor confidence which is absolutely essential for utilities and there are many utilities around the world as we know that are simply lacking the basic finance that they they need to even keep um working operationally also, you have even more important than investor confidence, you have confidence of the user. That is absolutely essential. And it was interesting that I think Batsy showed the uh, example in England, which is where I'm from. And at the moment, trust and confidence in the sector, but the way the sector has been regulated is at an all time low. And for quite honestly, quite good reason as well. It's inexcusable. It's what's happened. So well, I think we've seen from the English example of where things can go badly wrong and where things need to be fixed. So we have a call to action. We have many calls to action in this sector and perhaps we have call to action fatigue. But this one is I do believe it's different because we think that the reason is sound. And also I, I've seen on the, the notes there's a roadmap of action and that's very clear. We at Aquafed are already mobilising now a working group to, to quickly work on this, um, on, on, on the call to action and to provide examples of what we think good regulation looks like, because you know, I'll leave the diplomacy to others in this group who are very, very good at it about trying to convince the politicians. That's not my personal skill. What I want to do is to make sure that we give governments and the officials the answers of what good, good regulation looks like for utilities. So that's what we're looking forward to doing. And I think finally, just to say this is an amazing opportunity for Aquafed to be working with SOS and Adresa, for example, as well as many others. And we look forward to that partnership with you as well as, of course, people we already know well, like Rita. And I thank Rita for her excellent speech just now. That was very, very inspiring, Rita. Thank you. So thank you so much, Neil, uh, for not only uh, highlighting the, um, the relevance for utilities, for operators, also um, for raising the fact that, yes, there are a lot of uh, call for action being done, but we really need to focus on the action uh, that is expected to happen after November, after the launch. So, so probably this is why we are really uh, willing to have this quick process and then over a year in, the, in 2025 to, to advocate for it. And, and uh, before I move forward with the closing remarks, uh, we noticed that Gustavo Sautiel is here. Oi, Gustavo, to the home. <laughs> So uh, Gustavo has been involved in that also. The World Bank has been involved uh, since the meeting in uh, Stockholm this year. So I know you are not prepared, but if you would like to share your thoughts, you would have, you can have two minutes. Hello. Hello, Isabella. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, and uh, I'm very pleased to see all the presentations and as Neil was saying, inspiring presentations. Um, most of the organizations represented today are partners of the World Bank. We are working with many of you. Uh, I'm very happy to see that the call to action is seeing the light and it will be launched in November and the World Bank is happy to support it as needed. 
um, both at the global level, at the regional level. We are working with some of the regional organizations, uh, with many of you uh, regulators um, and organizations supporting regulations. So, so count on us. And again, thanks for the invitation to be part of this important initiative. I can only subscribe what was said to what was said before, uh, and only add that today, and to add to the core, actually, today uh, regulation is more relevant than ever, uh, in particular because of climate change, because of droughts affecting different parts of the world, water scarcity, etc. The role of the regulator becomes more prominent, but that comes with important challenges as well. I had the opportunity of visiting the Superintendencia de Servicios Sanitarios in Chile a few weeks ago, and it's one of the leading regulators, uh, I would say, around the world. And it's amazing to see how they are adapting their regulatory models and tools to deal with the impacts of climate change and to be able to engage with other sectors. So thanks a lot. A lot of exciting work ahead for all of us. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you. Thank you, Gustavo. Uh, well, we have not prepared, so but it was great, and it's really important to have the commitment and support from the World Bank. Uh, so uh, we could, we have to, um, expected to have some time for uh, Q&A. Uh, we will not be able to because we have technical sessions starting now at 1.30, and Isabella here will be leading the uh, Virgin Margaritas Forum, so she really needs to be there. Uh, but we are, the, the Rachel is here, and they are um, well available to uh, respond to any questions you may have. We at WA, we are also here, and uh, we could be talking after the session, or we could be talking uh, remotely later. Uh, so please feel free to, to contact both uh, Batsy or uh, IWA, and we can, uh, we can address any queries. Um, so now, we will hear from a national level regulator who will give us some uh, closing remarks. Uh, please welcome Mohamed Said Al Hamidi, uh, sorry, <laughs> CEO of the Water Sector Regulatory Council of Palestine. Mohamed, the floor is yours. Well, good uh, afternoon from Palestine. Uh, thank you for the uh, invitation to address the meeting. I'm really grateful for this. Uh, well, let, let me be brief uh, due to the time shortage. Uh, so far in Palestine, uh, we've been looking at ourselves as a catalyst for change through the policy recommendations to the policymakers. But uh, due to the current escalations, uh, the demand for the regulator services is really increasing. And we see ourselves as to be the lead for these, uh, uh, for, for new uh, services and, and, and new uh, regulatory tools. Therefore, we've been looking at ourselves, what tools, what mechanisms should we adopt uh, different than what we have adopted so far and uh, how to strengthen the council to meet the current challenges. But what came yesterday was really amazing and put a big question mark on, on the relations with the government. I've been uh, requesting the government to endorse tariff uh, and licenses for the past two years, and the relation was smooth. Uh, a month ago, a new government was established in Palestine, and when they have looked at the uh, application today, few of the ministers said, what is the council? What is the regulator? That put a big question mark on what sort of relation should a regulator have with the government and how to institutionalize this relation to avoid such silly questions in the future. Uh, if if the, some of the minister does not know what the regulatory uh, council is, uh, there is a big question mark on what added value they might have. Uh, but, but regardless, uh, what we have seen so far and what we have, can take away from this meeting is that uh, a number of regulators around the world, they have developed rich experience in regulatory tools. And we believe, we all believe that there is a big added value to share that uh, experience with other regulators around the world. Uh, but again, being independent in Palestine, our uh, main uh, income was through licensing fees. 
but the, with the current uh, escalations and uh, economic hardship, that fee collection went down to zero. Would that be good enough to sustain a regulator? I'm sure we are not the only one who is facing that. If your your uh, sustainability depends only on your own resources. Uh, at the same time, uh, as a regulator in Palestine, we are the main data provider through our data uh, annual collection and quarterly collection of data. But again, through the escalations, we have lost the whole data of Gaza. Again, would that be good enough to sustain our continuity? So, which means that there is a great demand now to to look at to to to, to initiate this call. And in Palestine, we would be the first. I would be. I would say again, the first because of the demand and the need to look into and to support this call, uh, uh, the, the, the new call. Uh, thank you, Muhammad. We need to close because there's another meeting that is starting here. Well, thank you, th thank you, thank you very much for this. We are really looking for forward for this, and will be the big supporter for this initiative. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for bringing especially a very practical uh, perspective on the relevance of this initiative and to bring your commitment. Thank you so much. So to conclude this session, I would like to first thank to all our speaker, speakers uh, in person and remote for confirming their commitment. So uh, uh, specifically IWA, WHO, UNICEF, Juwapa, Esawas, Liswater, Adrasa, Aquafed, World Bank and uh, WSRC uh, commitment, fully committed to this convention. Uh, this clearly shows that this is uh, a global and multi-sector initiative and applicable to multiple geographical contexts. So we are uh, confident that this will contribute to strengthening political commitment to improving water and sanitation regulation and thereby enhancing water and sanitation uh, service delivery. As next steps, but she has already um, highlighted, we will have a consultation and a sensitization uh, for, uh, process in the coming months. Uh, we aim at launching the call to action in November, probably at the RegNet, the virtual RegNet meeting in Jordan, right, at the end of November. And uh, then for the following year, we would have a lot of follow-up uh, actions to be planned. Uh, once again, thank you very much to our speakers and to our audience. We were not expecting such a good audience. Thank you very much for joining us today. And I, I invite you to join our multiple technical sessions to start now at 1.30 p.m. Thank you very much.